Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from the Minecraft Create Mod where we're going to be taking a look at drills and mining today. And we're particularly going to be looking at drilling horizontally in order to make tunnels or to go resource mining, as well as drilling straight down, let's say if you wanted to get down to the bottom of your world for some reason. And we'll start off with what is probably going to be what most people want to do, which is we're going to make a tunnel through this little hill that you can see here. And just to point out, this is all going to be early game stuff, so we're not using any brass or anything like that. Having said that, you will still need a few specialist bits of kit. In particular, you're going to need a cart assembler, you're going to need to get some rails, and you're going to need a wrench, just because it makes life much easier. Then you will, of course, need your drills, otherwise you're not going to get very far at all, and you're going to need a minecart with furnace. None of these is expensive, though. If we come over to JI, we can see our wrench. Early game, it just uses golden sheets, and then the other thing you are going to need was a cart assembler, which does need a little bit of redstone. Just one little piece, as you can see. So really not challenging to make, even if you're quite early game. But let's have a little go and see what we need to do in order to make ourselves a tunnel. And the first thing you're going to want to select is where you want the centre of your tunnel to be. So let's say we're making one for train tracks, for example. Well, we know that it's going to need to be at least three blocks wide, because that's how wide a train track is. So we'll make it five blocks wide instead, and we're going to say that this is the central point. So you need to place down a little piece of rail, and then on top of that, put down your cart assembler. And you'll notice immediately it has got a little arrow on the top of it that points very conveniently in the direction that it considers to be forwards. So into our tunnel, in this case, is going to be going straight into our hill. And the reason why this is important, of course, is because we're going to be putting a mining machine down, so it's going to need to have its drills pointing in the forwards direction. You don't want it to run forwards, and the drills are actually pointing backwards, because it's not going to be cutting into anything. Either way, though, let's have a little look and see if we can get something built up. So what you can do, though, is if we come down to the side of our little cart assembler, we clear out some space, we can put down a lever just next to it there, and that's because these have two states. So we either be unpowered, as it is now, or if you put some redstone into the block underneath it, you can see that it becomes powered, and a little light shows on the sides of it. And that's going to become very important in just a second. You'll also notice that on the side of your little cart assembler, you've got sort of an interface just there, which is highlighted by these little interconnecting arrows. And if you hover your cursor over that and then hold down the right mouse button, you'll find it brings up a little HUD like this. So this is just telling you how is your contraption going to move once you've made it and set it off. In this case, always face towards the motion. In this case, making it with drills, for example, it means those drills are always going to be facing forwards, no matter which way the cart is going. Pause the actors while rotating. It's not going to drill while it's trying to turn a corner with that one selected. And lock rotation means instead of always facing forwards, it will always face in the direction that you made it, which may not make much sense. And so I've made a little track here so we'll be able to put our cart around it once we've put it together, which is luckily by far the easiest part of this. Making a little mining drill is incredibly simple in this game, and you can make it to a good size as well, and it's nice and cheap, because even drills really aren't that expensive. They just use a little bit of iron and a little bit of the andesite alloy. If you bring them up from JEI, you can see that they're really quite cheap, considering how useful they're going to be. They're going to be able to get you lots more resources. But anyway, let us make our little contraption. All we're going to do is we're going to come to our little cart assembler. It doesn't matter whether it's powered or not at this point. We can see that that's the arrow pacing forwards, so we know that's the direction the drills need to be facing in. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to use wood to build up around our little contraption, placing bits and pieces down until I have made this shape that I want to create. Now I want this to be five wide, so I'll come around and I'm going to make it, let's say, four blocks tall maybe, then three across the top, why not? Let's make it into a sort of tunnel shape, just like that. And now I just need to cover all of this with drills. You don't need to use any glue or anything at this point, just get everything set up and then we will glue it together at the end. As you can tell, this is quite a lot of drills that we're putting down, so you will need to have a supply of iron by this point. What that's going to do, that is going to be able to create our tunnel for us. And you will notice that we have left a little one by two gap that, funnily enough, is exactly the same size as a player. And that's because this is an early game contraption. We are not expecting it to be able to lay down its own rails, which will be needing brass a bit later on. And is a little bit more of an advanced piece of kit. So we are going to be digging a preliminary rail for it to run along. So it doesn't need to dig that out. We'll be digging it out ourselves. 
this point, though, the last thing we need to do is we just need to get all this stuck together. To do that, we can use super glue. You can pick any of the corners of your contraption, click on it with the right button of your mouse, and you'll start highlighting as you move your cursor around. Try to get roughly everything into the bounding box first time, just makes things a little bit easier. If not, don't worry, though. What we can do is we can, once we've got most of it in there, right click again, and you'll see it applies glue and sticks everything together. Then we just need to add these bits in across the top. So I'll just highlight them up again. And as long as they're all highlighted in there, I can click confirm and everything is stuck together now. You can see we've got that bounding box that goes right the way around and everything is within the green box. So last thing we need to do with this then is we just need to power it so it can actually run. And we're going to use a minecart with furnace simply because, again, they are cheap, cheerful and very easy to run, very effective for drilling with. And to use it, we just need to place it on that little rail that we place down the bottom. This is the cart that we're using to assemble upon this contraption. <laughs> so I'll just pop him just there. There we go. And now we come down to our all important lever that we left down the bottom. So if we now flick this, you'll notice the whole thing lifted up by just one little pixel, exposing the dirt down at the bottom that was being covered by the wood. So we can flick it down and flick it back up, flick it down, flick it back up. And whenever it is up like that, it has now become an actual contraption that we can use. So at the moment, I can't actually do anything with it. I can't click on it. But I can't break any of these blocks because it's classed as a contraption, not blocks. Whereas if I click on this lever again, so I put it back down, I can now break things if I wanted to again. I'll just pop that back, it glued back in again. So we'll just lift it back up again so that we can use it. At this point then, I can actually walk straight into this little cart as long as it's up off the ground and it should just move forward. There we go. The whole thing has now become a contraption and we can pick it up nice and easily using a wrench. So if you just come over to your minecart and then right click it with your wrench, you will find you pick up the entire contraption and it is now right there in my inventory ready to be used and I can put this down onto any other rail. So for example, if I come over to here where I've made a little square for it to run around, I can simply hover over a rail, right click again and boom, the entire contraption has now appeared in front of me, drills and all ready to be set off. And if we then come around the back of our contraption with something we can power it with, so some charcoal or some coal, and we right click that into our little furnace down the bottom, we can set this one off. And as you can see, it is going around its track and the little drills are drilling away, ready to go and collect up some stone for us, or in this case, make a nice tunnel for us. If we then come back over to our cart assembler though, and we have another look at these three little settings that we've got, we can see how they're starting to make sense. So always face towards the motion. Yep, that is always facing in the direction that it is traveling. Those drills are always pointing forwards. Now, if we grab this as it goes by, whoop, I just run and catch up with it and snatch up that cart, I can come and place it back in this cart assembler and we'll change its setting. So what we'll do instead is we'll set it to lock its rotation. What we can do from here is we can place our contraption in. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this little switch a couple of times just to make sure it is set. It can be a little bit stubborn about changing this, so it's worth just doing it a couple of times. And then we'll push him back out again and we'll see that that will have changed its setting and the rotation should now be locked. So we'll come back over. We'll try and remember which one of these two contraptions it was. I believe it was this one and then we will set him off again. Maybe it was that one. There we go. Oh, there you go. With two of them working together, we can see them quite nicely. So this one is now not changing its rotation as it goes around. It is always facing towards the mountain, whereas this one is changing its rotation as it goes around. So this highlights quite nicely the two different settings. One has its rotation locked and the other one doesn't. In general, though, the one without its rotation locked is by far the most useful. And so now, though, we know how to assemble ourselves a little mining contraption, and we know a little bit about how its rotation is going to work. Let's set it off actually digging us a tunnel. And what I'm going to do is I am simply going to dig my way through this mountain as long as I feel like going in order to build a little tunnel. There we go, then. We've got our sort of guiding rail running down the middle. Remember that it runs on the rails, but it is powered by charcoal. It doesn't need any redstone at all. Just use standard rails for this one. We can then pop down our little mining contraption and we'll power it with charcoal and away it's going to go. 
see it is digging its way through, it's dug through all of the dirt already, and depending on the density of what it's going through will affect its speed. So what you'll find is that it digs quite quickly through stone, but it'll dig quite slowly through deep slate, for example. But if you follow along behind it, you can pick up all of the resources that it drops. And also, when it goes through any ores or anything like that, you'll be able to pick up their experience as well. And once the cart comes to the end of the track, you can then just use your wrench and you can pick it back up again, and then turn around and see the huge, great, big, long, dark tunnel you have created. One thing it is worth remembering is that it does not lay torches for you, so just be careful you're not leaving a trail of mobs behind. But that's not bad. When you consider that it's only been going for about 50 seconds or so, if I'd been mining all of this out with a stone pick, it would have taken absolutely forever. And if we just come and have a little look in a chest you can see inside my inventory, I did actually pick up all of the resources that the mining machine has cut out. It's just not going into the machine itself yet. We can do that though, because we can add chests onto it. If you're not fussed about gathering up more cobblestone, you can leave it without chests. But if we come back over to our cart assembler, we can make changes to our contraption. And we do that by simply hovering the cursor back over that little rail that's down there and right clicking our contraption back into the cart assembler so that we can make changes to it again. If we come down to our little lever, we need to make sure that the contraption is sitting on the floor so it has once again become blocks that we're able to lead break and then replace. Now what we can do is we can say, OK, well, do you know what? I want to have some chests on this. So we can place them just on the back of our contraption and then we can just glue them back on again, exactly the same as we would have done before. So we can just fix them in a little bounding box and then attach them onto the side of our contraption. And now when we lift this back up again off the floor, we should be able to push it and the chests are moving with it as well. So we know they have become part of our mining device. And it's not just chests that you can do. You can change the shape of the whole thing in this way. So if I just pick him back up again and then we'll come back around and we'll place him back in. And here we go. Make sure it is on the floor. Just get rid of these spares out of my inventory. So let's say perhaps I don't want to dig tunnels anymore. I want to just straightforward mine for resources. I want to cut a swathe out of this hill. Well, what we can do is we can just take off one side, for example, remove those and we'll just build it up on one side. Let's make just like a great big block of drills. There we go. We'll make it a little bit taller as well, why not? And this can, of course, go on infinitum. It can be as big as you want it to be. It can become absolutely stupidly huge if you really want to. Just bear in mind it's going to get more and more expensive with the iron that you're using. From here then, though, we can come back to our glue and see, ah, well, we need to reattach all of this, don't we? Because now this isn't part of our device. There we go. Everything is within that pale green bounding box. They're all overlapping with each other, so it should be good to go. Here then, we can pick him up, shove him forward, same as usual. The whole thing has moved and then we can go and use this now for mining the resources and it will just put it straight into that chest. Same as before, we can place the contraption down, power it with some charcoal or some coal, and now what it's going to do is it will just start cutting a great big chunk out of this landscape. And what we can do though, as this is slowly going along and chopping its way through this stone, is we can have a look in the chest that we put up there, and we can see all of the resources getting gathered into it. And it will pick up absolutely everything that it mines out, leaving behind just bits and pieces of experience that you can pick up too. And then, once your contraption reaches the end of the line, you can pick it back up, and it'll pick up all of the resources as well that were in that chest. And if you're in a survival world, so if I just transfer myself over to survival, what I can do is I can use the wrench and I can pick up these rails nice and easily just by hovering over them and right clicking. They will go into my inventory and it doesn't use up durability, unlike if you were trying to use a pick. And also it's obviously an awful lot quicker as well. So it means that you can shift rails around nice and quickly with the wrench without having to worry about it quite so much. And then once you've moved your line over, you can just 
remake the little contraption, and then we'll just set him off again, and it'll just keep on cutting through for us. I should take out any resources I happen to like to look off. But hopefully you can see, though, this is a really easy way to gather stone extremely quickly compared to any other way, especially early game if you've only got sort of iron or stone pickaxes. In the course of about five minutes, we have cut out a massive amount of rock. But what if you don't want to be going horizontally? What if you want to go down? And luckily for us, digging down is even easier than going horizontally. All we're going to need for it is a nice little rope pulley. So what we can do is I'm going to pull her up a little bit. And I'll come back into my screen and find my little pulley. There he was. And if I place this up against there, you can see it's got a little shaft input on one side, a coiled up rope in the middle of it, and then you've got this sort of plate on the bottom, which is where you can attach something. In this case, it's going to be drills. But this has the other benefit, which is that it can be powered using a water wheel. It is speed dependent, so we are going to speed it up a little bit. So what we're just going to do is we're going to place a small cog wheel on one side, going to a large one. We'll then have a little shaft between those and another small one, and then a large one going back in the opposite direction. And what this is doing is because I'm going to place my water wheel just here, every time that changes from a large cog wheel to a smaller one, we are doubling in speed. So we've doubled our speed twice in this instance. All we need to do now is get this little water wheel working. And in order to do that, we can place a couple of dirt blocks or something just underneath our water wheel, and we're going to surround those with trapdoors just like so. And what this is doing is it's giving us a little area that we can put water into. We will need to have a couple of trapdoors underneath as well. Then we can remove one of these blocks, place our water up against it where that was, and then remove the second block. And so the flowing water is now able to turn that water wheel. Now we can just flip up these little trapdoors just so that everything looks neat and contained. And we can see at the moment our rope pulley isn't doing anything. The shaft is turning, so it should be, but it's not. And that's because that water is actually flowing in the wrong direction. What we can do, though, to make our life a lot easier is we can swap out this shaft for a gear shift. What this means now is that we can use redstone to control which way things are turning. So if I just go and grab myself a little lever. So from that, we'll pop that on the side. At the moment, this is unpowered. So both of these cogs, as they run through that gear shift, are going in the same direction. If I power it, though, this one has changed direction, and we can see the rope has been descended. And if I flick it the other way, it'll go back up again. And as you can see, it's picked up a little block of dirt as it's gone. And that highlights very nicely how we're going to be able to use these drills. So if I just take that block away and I swap it for a drill just on there instead, so that it is actually pointing down, now when I descend that rope, what's going to happen is the drill will start to work because it's moving and it's going to drill into the ground. So if we drill it down, there he goes. He is going to start popping holes in the dirt as he goes down. We'll bring him back up again. We'll just make this little platform a bit larger. So let's make it a four by four. Why not? And we will dig a slightly bigger hole. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to pop a chest on the top, same as we did with the horizontal digger, just so that we can gather up these resources. And we'll stick it just in the middle like so. And then all this needs to be glued together. So I can come over to here, select my whole little platform of drills, make sure they're glued together, select my chest and glue that one on as well. And there we go, everything is now stuck together, and now when I descend all of this, it is going to start making quite a big hole. As we go down... And there we go, as you can see. I can hop in, I can go and travel down with this, and I can watch the resources gathering in this chest exactly the same as we could do with the minecart. Just bear in mind, if you're in survival, you can't climb back up of here unless you happen to have an elytra or a lot of ladders with you. Luckily, I'm in creative, so I can just hop back up again. And just to point out, as it goes down, if it encounters water, it's going to keep on drilling, and that is the same if it goes through lava as well. It will just keep going until it reaches something it cannot dig through, which is basically going to be the bottom of your world. And once you've decided that you've made a deep enough hole now, you can, of course, just flip the lever and it'll bring the whole contraption back up again, drills and all, including all of the resources that it has mined out. And there we go. Here comes our drills. 
Now we can see what we've actually got out of that. Oh, looks like we'd actually filled up our storage completely and we went through some limestone at some point. And there you go though, there are two very simple little mining contraptions that are early game and they are very useful for collecting lots of stony resources, or I suppose if you just feel like making a great big hole in your world for some random reason. Anywho though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video, happy minecrafting everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye bye!